Hi everyone, welcome back to the Doge Academy and welcome back to Introduction to Programming Using Java. Continuing the conditionals part, we are going to talk about a different type of functionality that we have available that will make our life easier when we are working with multiple conditions. This is called switch statements. So I just press Ctrl Alt L here to organize the code a little bit better. And now let's uh, go here into conditionals and let's create another conditionals 08 and again psvm i made a typo here shift f6 on the channels 08 so you have to do it through shift f6 now can you see that the classes they have a package and again if you try to use scanner just to show you an import the import must come in between the class and the package if you try to move it up we are going to see an error the package should be the first valid statement in your file. If you want to write comments, eh, it's not a problem because comments, they will be ignored by the compiler, but nothing else that's valid should be placed before the package. And the same thing for import, it should be under the package and before the class. Okay, so what are we going to do here? I'm going to remove this because we're not going to use at the moment. Imagine that we have the following Thing. Imagine that we have like an integer that will represent the day. So it goes from one to seven, one being like uh, Sunday and seven being um, Saturday. So if we have an if that's going to print the days of the week, it would be something like this. So if day equals one equals one, then south sunday and then i'm going to copy this to make things a little bit faster so we have here else ctrl v else ctrl v else ctrl v it doesn't matter if it's a little bit unorganized because we are going to do ctrl alt l and it's going to organize the code for us so one two three four five six and then Technically, we can have the else. So Sunday, Monday. Even if you don't learn if, at least you learn the days of the week. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and the last one is Saturday. Okay, so, okay, as you can see, it's pretty straightforward. We can understand what's happening here, but wow, ooh, it's a lot of uh, a lot of content for just printing the the days of the week, and a lot of else if else if else if. Is that a better way to do it? Yes, we have what we call switch statements. Now the switch statements is a little bit different from the the if, but they are going to achieve almost the same result, especially if you are doing simple comparisons like this. For example. Let's do it down below here, but not before the main is closed. So let's continue here. What is the syntax? The syntax is the following. First you type switch. And then here it comes the conditional. In this case, I just want to see what is the variable that will be applied this condition. For example, I want switch and then uh, not age, this is uh, date switch day and then we open and close curly braces and in case the day is one i want to print sunday and then i'm going to do the following for all of them i'll press ctrl d to all of them two as you can see you cannot repeat the the case so case one should be unique you cannot have another case one three four five six and seven and you have sunday and i'm just monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday and saturday okay can you see that we basically achieved the same thing but in a much cleaner way there are a couple of things that we have to be very careful here for example let's change here to seven Control Shift F10. 
as you can see, we have Saturday, Saturday. Okay, but why did I pick the last one? Because there is a tricky with switch. So the first rule is, this is the syntax. You can have like a block of things here. You could technically open and close and have more things happening here inside. But the first thing, the first rule you have to remember is, the conditionals that we have here, first must match the type of the variable. In this case, you are asking for the day, basically. If this integer is one, two, or up to seven, you do one of these conditionals. Second, the conditionals that we have here should be unique. You cannot have case one here and case one somewhere nearby. The third one is if you have something that is going to be triggered in the beginning, it will go all the way to the end. So basically it's going to check case by case. And once it finds one valid, it will start. And if there is nothing to break, it will just keep going. So for example, I put one, you will see that we have Sunday and then we have Sunday and then it started. Once it got inside this one, it started going here, 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 all the way to the end. How can we stop? Basically after each one of these statements, we have this word break. So what the word break is doing is going to end the switch. So for example, before we use break, let's put a break point here, Shift F9. Can you see it stopped here? The console is here, Sunday. Then I will press F8. And you see that it's executing all of them. But if I add a keyword called break, Control Alt L, actually this is the way it should be formatted. Let's say again, Shift F9, we are going to see, okay, Shift F9, for some reason it's not stopping the debug, there you go. Okay, so day is one, I will press F8, can you see that we are now inside the case one, it's going to execute Sunday and then F8, break, and then it will go outside the switch statement. So the break will just make the code jump from the break to outside these curly braces, basically skipping the block of the switch. So technically, you should have break for all of them. So break here, break here, break here, break here, break here, and break here. And now, we can add anything. So for example, if I add here four and I execute control shift F10, not in debug mode, we have here Wednesday and we have the W. Okay, so I think that's enough. Uh, let's continue with more switch statements in the next video. So I see you there. Bye bye.